Yes. Uh, I welcome all of you uh, to this uh, makeup class. Uh, and today we shall discuss on uh, a special class of bioactive natural products, uh, the alkaloids. So I hope you will enjoy because alkaloids are historically very famous. Uh, can you see the uh, slide clearly? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Yes. Alkaloids are the most important and prominent group of bioactive natural products and you can uh, see this image. Image is a uh, poppy uh, uh, pot, uh, poppy flower, obviously, uh, you have seen in the garden. Uh, poppy carries a very famous uh, alkaloid uh, uh, called uh, morphine. Morphine is the most uh, famous uh, alkaloid in the history and it was isolated in 1804 from uh, Pepebar somniferum, uh, the poppy plant. And especially the alkaloids are uh, biosynthesized and uh, are concentrated on the uh, in the pod. So if uh, if you scrap a scratch on the pod, the milky substances are coming out. And alkaloids are generally nitrogen containing uh, bioactive natural products. And morphine uh, is, uh, this name comes from Morpheus, Greek god of dreams. And it has uh, a very strong biological and neurological activity uh, in humans. So uh, let us uh, define alkaloids. What are alkaloids? Uh, alkaloids are uh, natural products. They are biosynthesized uh, in plants and uh, many other uh, vertebrate and invertebrate organisms, including the uh, microorganisms. In addition to carbon, hydrogen and nitrogen alkaloids may also contain oxygen, sulfur, and more rarely other elements such as chlorine, bromine, phosphorus in their structure. Uh, alkaloids are produced by a large variety of, variety of organisms. As I mentioned, uh, plants obviously uh, one of the most uh, uh, prominent uh, producer of alkaloids, but uh, bacteria, fungi, and some animals are also uh, uh, produce the alkaloids. Many alkaloids are toxic. So alkaloids, as they contain nitrogen, uh, they are uh, biologically active. Biologically active means uh, they can be beneficial uh, or harmful to the cells. So many of the alkaloids are toxic to other organisms and they often have pharmacological effects and are used as medi medications. And many of them are used as recreational drugs uh, or in uh, entheogenic rituals. Generally, alkaloids are bitter in taste. So, uh, Alkaloids, uh, they are, uh, even before the uh, uh, methods of uh, discovering new uh, organic compounds from the nature, like uh, penicillin discovered by uh, Sir Alexander Fleming, uh, people have been used uh, alkaloids as food mixture. For example, uh, tobacco. Tobacco contain, uh, you know, uh, nicotine uh, and even mixture of the different uh, herbal uh, 
products. Uh, origin of alkaloids, as uh, I mentioned, they are uh, produced by plants, uh, microorganisms, or even many invertebrate uh, animals. Uh, the word alkaloid uh, originated from a German uh, word alkaloidy, which was introduced in 1819 by German chemist Karl Meissner and is derived from late Latin root alkali. So alkali, this word uh, actually originated from uh, Arabic al-walja, uh, ashes of plants, uh, and uh, Greek uh, suffix like like. Uh, that is like ashes of plants. However, the term came into widely use uh, by the scientist after the publication of a review article uh, by uh, Jacobsen in the Chemical Dictionary of Albert Leidenberg in the 1880s. So uh, historically, you can see alkaloids are uh, even in the many uh, scientific documents, uh, you can find the word after 1880s. More than 12,000 alkaloids uh, had been identified by 2018, but exact number of alkaloids uh, at this moment, 2024, obviously nearly 20,000. There is no unique method of naming alkaloids. How can we name the alkaloid? Uh, but many uh, uh, individual names are formed by adding the suffix "-ine", uh, to the species of generic alkaloids. For example, atropine, atropine, that is "-ine", at the end, uh, the suffix is uh, isolated from the uh, plant Atropa belladona. Uh, another is strychnine is obtained from the seed of strychnine tree. Uh, if several alkaloids are extracted from one plant, then their names often contain uh, idine -E uh, or anine or eline or inine, etc. There are also at least 86 alkaloids containing the root vin, vin, for example, vinca alkaloids, vin crystal, or like that. So no straightforward nomenclature, but uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, part of the uh, alkaloid name I, I mentioned here. And historically, uh, alkaloid containing plants uh, are used by humans since ancient times for therapeutic and recreational purposes. That means in ancient time, before the discovery of a specific alkaloid present in the uh, plant, people used them as therapeutic and recreational purposes. For example, many alkaloids in the neem, neem tree, uh, uh, different parts of the neem tree or, uh, you know, uh, tobacco plant uh, or many solanaceae plants and other plants, uh, uh, people use them uh, as recreational uh, uh, purposes. For example, medicinal plants have been known in the Mesopotamia, uh, Mesopotamia uh, at least around 2000 years before the birth of Christ. Very interesting, uh, the Odyssey of Homer referred to a gift given to uh, the Egyptian Queen Helen, uh, which uh, was a drug bringing oblivion. It is believed that the gift was an opium containing drug. Uh, that means opium, uh, obviously you heard about this uh, uh, alkaloid. Opium is very powerful drug and uh, this drug uh, can, uh, uh, you know, uh, profoundly influence the uh, nervous system or uh, uh, brain activity. 
uh, a Chinese book on house plants written in first to third centuries before the birth of Christ mentioned a medical use of ephedra and opium poppies. Also, coca leaves were uh, used by South American Indians since ancient times. So coca leaves are uh, another, uh, you know, uh, alkaloid containing uh, plant leaves. So uh, the, he is the very famous uh, man, German chemist, uh, Friedrich uh, Sertoner, uh, who first isolated uh, morphine from opium plant and purified it. So let us uh, briefly discuss about the classification of alkaloids. Alkaloids are uh, can be classified into uh, several groups. Uh, more recent classification are based on similarity of the carbon skeleton, indole or isoquinoline or pyridine-like, or some of them are uh, biogenetic precursor like ornithine, lysine, tyrosine, tryptamine. That means alkaloids are biosynthesized predominantly from different uh, uh, And however, they require compromises in borderline cases. For example, nicotine contains a pyridine fragment from the nicotinamide uh, and pyrrolidine apart from the ornithine. That means nicotine, uh, when uh, biosynthesized, I shall discuss later on, uh, it also derived from a couple of, you know, uh, amino acids. And uh, based on the bio, uh, uh, you know, uh, genetic uh, origin, their name is also, uh, and they are uh, classified also uh, 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 like that. So uh, alkaloids are often divided into five major groups. And the first group we can call true alkaloids. True alkaloids are heterocycle uh, organic compounds uh, that are originated from amino acids. Uh, you know that all secondary metabolites are derived from the primary metabolites. In case of alkaloids, uh, they are derived mostly uh, from the amino acids. Their characteristics, uh, uh, the characteristic, characteristic example of true alkaloids are atropine, nicotine, morphine, like that, the most famous one. This group also include piperidine alkaloids, <coughs> sorry, for example, conine and uh, conicin. Conine, very famous, uh, which is uh, also uh, known as hemlock, <laughs> very poisonous uh, alkaloid. And conicin, although they do not originate from the amino acid. Uh, but uh, the, the second group, proto alkaloids, uh, they contain obviously nitrogen and also originate from the amino acids. Uh, and they are like mescaline, adrenaline, or ephedrine. Uh, there are some uh, other uh, uh, alkaloids like putrescine uh, uh, that are derived from the uh, putrescine, spermidine, or spermine. They are called uh, polyamine alkaloids. Some uh, peptide or cyclopeptide alkaloids are also present, for example, mestoparan or like that. Pseudo alkaloids, the last group, uh, uh, pseudo alkaloids are alkaloid like compounds which do not originate uh, from amino acids. Uh, this group include a tarpin like uh, or steroid like alkaloids. Uh, as well as purine-like alkaloids, such as caffeine, very famous, you know, alkaloid caffeine. We often uh, test the caffeine when we take a cup of coffee. Thiobromine and, uh, you know, uh, caffeine and thiobromine, they are also uh, found in uh, the, uh, you know, our popular drink, uh, caffeine, 
uh, uh, coffee as well as uh, in tea. So uh, I shall discuss another group of uh, alkaloids. Uh, now, step by step, different examples I shall give you uh, uh, the alkaloids. Those are hugely being used worldwide and uh, very famous for their biological activity. One of the important class or group, I can say group because class is different. Five classes already we uh, discussed, tropane alkaloids. And you perhaps know that the Datura, uh, Datura plant, uh, Datura stemonium or Datura metal, uh, these uh, plant materials are used by the, uh, you know, uh, uh, some people uh, to make others uh, uh, subconscious or like that, uh, or unconscious uh, for uh, especially the thief. Uh, and robbers sometimes use this type of uh, materials, dotora leaves or uh, uh, materials. And they contain tropane alkaloids. Tropane alkaloids are a class of bicyclic, bicyclic alkaloids and secondary metabolites that contain a tropane ring, tropane ring in, uh, you know, uh, in their structure, tropane ring in their structure. This is the uh, tropane ring uh, and uh, tropane alkaloids occur naturally in many members of the plant family Solanaceae. Uh, Dotura is obviously uh, Solanaceae, uh, belongs to the family of Solanaceae. Certain tropane alkaloids uh, such as cocaine and scopolamine are notorious for their uh, psychoactive effects related uses and cultural association. You know, cocaine. Uh, very, very uh, uh, well-known alkaloid, cocaine. Once uh, people thought that Coca-Cola contains the cocaine and they are very powerful uh, psychoactive. Uh, they have the powerful psychoactive effects uh, in human uh, also. Particular tropane alkaloids such as the, uh, such as, uh, uh, you know, uh, cocaine, scopolamine or others, uh, they have, uh, the pharmacological properties also and can be anticholinergic uh, or stimulant effect. Uh, for example, a, a tropane alkaloids like uh, atropine and scopolamine, they are uh, very powerful uh, in uh, uh, medicinal uh, purposes. Um, atropine was extracted from the deadly night shade plant that is Atropa belladonna uh, and other plants of the family uh, Solanaceae. Here you can see the uh, structure of atropine uh, and uh, it is a competitive agonist of the uh, muscarinic acetylcholine receptor and blocks the contraction of circular pupillary a uh, sphincter or uh, muscle controlled by the acetylcholine uh, release. Uh, and it is uh, used as, uh, you know, uh, midriatic or uh, to dilate the pupils to, uh, you know, uh, improve the attention uh, of uh, uh, or concentration of uh, uh, the students for their study or like that. Also used by troops as an antidote for poisoning by nerve gases that target acetylcholine receptors. And it has been used by Egyptian queen Cleopatra to dilate her pupils in the hope that she would appear more alluring, <laughs> uh, a beautiful lady or like that. And scopolamine is another uh, very powerful uh, tropane alkaloid obtained from uh, the Datura uh, uh, stemonium and other plants of Solanaceae uh, as atropine, competitive agonist of the acetylcholine receptors. However, the therapeutic range is narrower. There are more side effects. It has very uh, side effect, like uh, this is why it has limited use in the, uh, the you know, uh, drug in, uh, industry. Uh, there are some other tropane alkaloids like hyocyamine, 
and cocaine. I shall focus uh, hyoscyamine uh, also uh, uh, extracted from the uh, Datura stemonium, the uh, Totura plant, uh, and uh, it is uh, brand name as uh, C-Max or Anaspas, or there are several uh, lab, lab scene that is many uh, trade names are uh, uh, in the drug use this active ingredient. It works by inhibiting the action of acetylcholine in smooth and cardiac muscle. And uh, uh, this is why uh, used to provide symptomatic relief to various gastrointestinal disorders, including spasms, peptic ulcers, or irritable bowel syndrome, uh, pancreatitis, colic, or cystitis. Uh, uh, this. Uh, cocaine is very, very uh, uh, known uh, alkaloid, which is uh, obtained or extracted or discovered from coca plant, erythrogylum coca. So this is the structure of cocaine, and it is a poly, uh, it has a polycyclic uh, structure, stimulant of central nervous system, and appetite suppressant. It has some, uh, you know, prominent function. One is a stimulant of central nervous system, and it can suppress the appetite, creating euphoric sense of happiness and increase energy. So, uh, uh, it, it has huge uh, a neurostimulating effect. For many decades, cocaine was a key ingredient in Coca Cola, but people. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, used uh, a cocaine in the Coca-Cola, but possibly uh, uh, currently it it is not uh, present in the Coca-Cola. Actually, the recipe of Coca-Cola is uh, not disclosed yet. When the uh, uh, Spaniards colonized South America, they at first ignored Aboriginal claims that the leaf gave leaf means coca plant leaf, gave them strength and energy and declared the practice of chewing. Uh, and interestingly, uh, you can see uh, a Sp a Spaniards when colonized South America, they saw this, uh, uh, you know, chewing of leaves. Uh, uh, they thought it is a devil work. <laughs> but finally, when they did some experiment and tested, they found that yes, it, uh, uh, the coca plant uh, contain uh, some power of uh, you know neurostimulating effect, and then it was uh, you know uh, they introduced the tax uh, uh, to the uh, the use of that plant like uh, we are uh, doing in case of cigarette or like that tobacco industry. Uh, this is the historical image. Uh, very, very early days, even, uh, you know, as a, a couple of hundred years ago, uh, people commercialized cocaine and they used in the uh, toothache drops. That is, uh, if you have toothache, then uh, that drop uh, works. And also uh, uh, in the wine, uh, they used, you know, cocaine. And cocaine has obviously powerful uh, uh, neurological, uh, uh, neurostimulating uh, effect. Uh, but the biggest problem associated with the use of cocaine is uh, uh, the people can be addictive and uh, uh, and it is uh, illegal, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a drug, uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it is... Uh, uh, used, uh, it can be used as medicine, limited doses. And nicotine, you know, very famous alkaloid. It is produced in that nicotiana tabacum, that is tobacco plant, and uh, very high concentration. Uh, it con uh, uh, constitutes uh, in the leaf 0.3 to 5 percent uh, 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 in dry matter uh, basis, uh, and uh, it is. Uh, widely used worldwide uh, all you know uh, uh, tobacco industry and uh, they are uh, uh, used it uh, in the uh, you know cigarette or many other purposes nicotine acts as 
nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and the small concentration to increase the activity of these receptors, among other things, leading to an increased flow of adrenaline a stimulating hormone. That means uh, when people are exposed to nicotine, then the adrenaline hormone, uh, you know, level uh, goes up uh, and many people are addicted to the cigarette. And worldwide, uh, you know, if, if you see uh, uh, tobacco uh, producing country, here is the least. China is the top. Brazil, India, United States, Indonesia, Turkey, Greece, Argentina, Italy, Pakistan, they use huge amount of uh, cigarette, uh, cigarette, nicotine. This is the, uh, you know, uh, last slide today, uh, the biosynthesis of nicotine. Uh, biosynthesis of nicotine, how nicotine is biosynthesized in the uh, tobacco plant. Actually, here you can see one root uh, uh, is Ornithine, another is aspartate. So ornithine uh, uh, to putrescine and then and methyl putrescine and methyl uh, pyrolinium, uh, you know, uh, cation and finally uh, nicotine. So uh, on the other hand, from aspartate, uh, it is uh, coming from alpha immunosuccinate, uh, quinolinate, and sodium, uh, you know, uh, methyl uh, 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 nicotine, and then finally uh, uh, nicotinate and uh, nicotine is synthesized. So uh, this uh, biosynthetic pathway of a model uh, compound and very uh, well-known compound nicotine uh, uh, is very important that you can understand how uh, the alkaloids are biosynthesized in the cell of a uh, plant. So uh, here all the uh, enzymes involved in the pathway are given. Uh, so today uh, uh, I would like to stop here and uh, I'm expecting uh, some questions from you to make this uh, online lecture interactive. So now it is your turn to ask some questions. Just unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, 90, uh, 18 students are attending this class, so uh, uh, please ask the question one by one. Rakib Hassan and Mishu, uh, please ask question. Uh, you can even share uh, about uh, your experience of, uh, you know, taking the alkaloids either at medicine or some other purposes. Some of the alkaloids uh, are also very toxic. For example, uh, in the uh, poisonous uh, animals or sting bug or others, they use uh, different, uh, uh, you know, alkaloids, toxic for human. Sir, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Fahim. Sir, my question is, if I want to make any commercial product from uh, these alkaloids, so uh, wh what can be, I, uh, what can I target? that can easily be achieved? Uh, it depends on, thank you so much. Uh, it's a nice question. Uh, it depends on the structure. Uh, some of the uh, chemical structure are uh, easy to uh, synthesize in the laboratory. Uh, so in that case, if it is, you know, only few steps and uh, if uh, uh, it is easy to synthesize, then uh, synthetic chemistry uh, 
they develop the protocol. So industrially, you can make larger amount, tons of, uh, you know, uh, amount uh, of, uh, of that compound and you can make capsule, tablet or anything else, even a liquid uh, product. Uh, natural uh, extraction from the natural, uh, you know, substances like plant, microorganism or other organisms, uh, alkaloids, uh, except nicotine and some major alkaloids like morphine, uh, they are not profitable and also uh, a problematic uh, because if you need a huge amount of plant to get small amount of compound, then uh, it is not uh, profitable. But some of the alkaloids, they are in very high concentration in the plant. In that case, plant-based extraction also possible. But if a compound is a very trace amount, uh, for example, 0.001% uh, in the uh, plant uh, dry weight, then uh, obviously it is suggested to go for the synthetic uh, industrial production. Uh, there are some other ways uh, you can if you know the biosynthetic pathway by genetic engineering, you can use a specific plant uh, or, or for example, uh, uh, Nicotiana, Bentha, Arminium, uh, some plants very fast grow or, uh, or you can use the microorganism, genetically engineered microorganism. And then uh, if you can over express particular gene, then uh, uh, the transgenic organism can produce the uh, high concentration of uh, the uh, natural product that you desire and you can extract industrially. Even cell culture in the, uh, you know, uh, fermentation uh, you know, plant uh, can be used. Cell culture means plant cell that uber express uh, mostly genetically engineered like microorganism we culture. You can culture root or leaf uh, tissues and, uh, you know, high, uh, uh, a big uh, uh, plant of cell culture plant, and then you can extract the targeted compound. If we use genetically engineered plant, as I mentioned, Nicotiana benthamiana, for uh, production of particular, you know, bioactive natural products, that is drug molecules, then it is called biofarming. Biofarming means biopharma, uh, that is P-H-A-R-M-I-N-G. Thank you so much, a very nice question. Any more question from any student? I am expecting at least one more question. Raihan Kausar, do you have any question? Sir, thank you, sir, for your nice class, sir. Sir, I have learned a lot from your class. Sir, I think it was theoretical class, sir. Uh, I have no questions, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, in our laboratory, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, used several alkaloids like staurosporin and uh, other uh, alkaloids to control the wheat blast. So uh, many bioactive alkaloids uh, uh, over the years we used in our research. So next time I shall uh, try to uh, clarify you uh, uh, some of the more uh, alkaloids. But before I stop, I would like to show uh, one slide. I, let me show. Yes, this one. This one I shared with you uh, in the uh, Facebook page, the chemistry of coffee. Coffee, uh, obviously, uh, you know, it contains cafe uh, caffeine. Caffeine is the main uh, alkaloid present in the uh, coffee. So the coffee content of co uh, 
uh, you know, caffeine content of coffee is variable, but is a, a, approximately 100 milligram in a cup. You can imagine high concentration. And ca uh, caffeine works by blocking the action of a group of brain chemicals called adenosines, which work to naturally trigger tiredness. And the amount of caffeine in your bloodstream peaks 15 to 45 minutes after uh, the drink. And interestingly, coffee, uh, sometimes you feel bitter, uh, bitterness. Bitterness is associated with two compounds, and that is 5 cafoil, uh, you know, quinic acid and 3 cafoil quinic 1,5 lactone. These two compounds basically associated with the bitterness of the coffee. And chlorogenic acids account for up to 8% of the composition of uh, unroasted coffee beans. More than 40 different varieties have been identified um, in coffee beans, but basically we take the roasted, uh, you know, uh, uh, beans uh, uh, and uh, chlorogenic acid content decreases when coffee beans are roasted. So both are roasted coffee. And if you have a coffee machine, you can face less, uh, you know, uh, the bitterness, uh, but uh, that they are also present in the uh, coffee and especially uh, the chlorogenic uh, acid uh, in the coffee is associated uh, with the flavor and uh, bitterness. And they have also some uh, biological activities. Uh, and in general, coffee, if you take uh, one cup per day, is very good and, uh, you know, uh, it is considered the best uh, drink because uh, it has lots of, uh, you know, uh, the positive uh, effect in our health. Uh, so uh, enjoy coffee, but never be addicted to too much uh, coffee. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, last, uh, uh, you know, uh, moment, can you ask any question? If no question, then I shall uh, uh, stop uh, share, uh, sharing the uh, slide. And thank you so much. Uh, I tried to record it, and if uh, uh, the record is well, I will share uh, through the uh, YouTube, and you can, uh, uh, you know, go through the uh, and watch the, the video. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, good night.